Praise God. Okay, we're going to get into the Word this morning. I'm, I'm, you know, when, I don't know how a, a woman is when she has a baby, but she's excited and she's ready to, I'm excited. I've got something in me this morning. I want to release it here. We're going to talk about the fourth element of faith, the fourth component of faith. And, and, and mm, I want you to receive this today. I want you to get it into your spirit. We're going to talk about this fourth one is praying in tongues. Praying in tongues. Amen? So we're going to look at this. Praying in tongues is a component to strong faith. Amen? So let's look at Jude. Chapter, it's, only, it's only got one chapter. Jude before Revelation. And it has one chapter. So verse 20. Jude verse 20. Look what the word of the Lord says. You got it? It's before Revelation. Jude verse 20. It says the following, but you, beloved, building up. Everybody say building. Come on, say building up. Going up. Building up your most holy faith. How? Praying in the Holy Ghost. But you, beloved, building up your faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost is praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues. Praying in tongues is a powerful component to a strong faith, effective faith. Now, as we get into this, I just want to mention as a preface to this message and state that if you don't speak in tongues this morning, if you have not been baptized with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues, this teaching should cause you to desire it and to want it. Amen? This teaching should cause you to want it. This message and this teaching on praying in tongues does not and should not exclude anyone. I don't want you to think, oh, I don't, I don't pray in tongues, so this message is not for me. Or I don't pray in tongues, so I'm missing on, an, on a real important component to faith. So my faith is missing out on something important. No, what, what I want you to do is to be filled with enthusiasm, Amen. to be filled with anticipation that I want to be able to receive the gift of speaking and praying in tongues. I want you to open your heart. I want you to be in a position of learning, in a position of receiving. Don't shut yourself off and say, that's not for me because I've never wanted those tongues anyway or I've never understood tongues and, and I, I, I'll close my, myself off to this message. I want this message to, to enthuse you, to make you say, you know what, I want that component to my faith. And for those of you that have been baptized with the Holy Spirit and you speak in tongues and you just think that's something you do every now and then, well, you're going to need to learn that it should be part of your everyday Christian walk. Amen. Tongues is not for you to shout it out and to do it so that people think you're more spiritual. No, it goes deeper than that. There's a benefit to tongues. It is so beneficial, it is so important to an effective faith life that you cannot just put tongues on, a, on the side table and use it just every now and then. It's available for you every day. And the more you get into praying in tongues, the more you get into cultivating a lifestyle of, of tongues, you begin to see the benefits of it in your Christian, in your Christian walk. Amen? So, let me say this. Salvation, salvation, being, becoming a born-again believer, salvation is a gift for the world. Okay? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever would believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. Salvation is a gift for the world. God loves everybody. God wants to save everybody. So when someone is saved, they become a born-again believer they receive this beautiful and precious gift. So when you're, when you're born again, you become part of the family of God. Then God has a gift for you, the born again believer. And the gift is the baptism with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. So salvation is a gift for the world. And then when you become a believer, God has another gift for you. And it is the gift of the baptism with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking with tongues. It's a gift that He wants to give you so that you can live this Christian life powerfully. 
Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, don't go away from Jerusalem. Do not leave Jerusalem. Don't go and preach. Don't go and start churches. Stay in Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. In verse 8 he says, For you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and then you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Wait, for you shall. Question, were all the disciples saved when Jesus spoke to them in Acts chapter 1? Question, were they saved? Yes, they were. Did they have the baptism with the Holy Spirit? No. It's a separate experience to salvation. It is a separate gift. There are some denominations, there are some uh, Christian teaching that says when you come to Jesus and you are born again, you receive the whole package as salvation. You're saved and you're baptized with the Holy Spirit as one event, one package. That's not true. When you come to Jesus, you are saved. And that's the most important thing. And if you die that day, you go to heaven. But someone once said, if you're thinking of dying today, you don't need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You go to heaven. But if you're thinking of living on this earth, up against everything we're up against, and you want to be effective and powerful, you need the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So you'll see all the way through the book of Acts, have you heard that? Have, we have not even heard there is a Holy Spirit. We have not even heard about the, about the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And they were saved. So the disciples went to the upper room in Acts chapter 2. They're in one accord in one place. Amen. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all their house where they were. And their cloven tongues as of fire sat upon each one of them. And then it says, And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. So, then the question is, why? Why do we have those, that tongue, those tongues? Why? why? Why did God... Why was that the evidence? Why, why was that given? Was it given so that we could pretend how spiritual we are? Was it given so that we could use it just in church? What was it given? It's intentionally given to be a support system to your Christian life. It is given so that you can benefit from them. It is given as a tool to help us. Now when it comes to faith, and an important element of faith is tongues. Tongues is one of the pillars to effective faith. So Jude says, building up your most holy faith. Where is your faith? Your faith is in your spirit. Building up your most holy faith, how? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in tongues. Therefore, if I want my faith to be built up, if I want my, my faith to be strengthened, yes, the Word, yes, confession, yes, connections, but also, here's another component, tongues. My, you go into praying in tongues, you go into worshipping in tongues and you literally feel your faith being built up. You literally feel faith being stirred on the inside of you. You literally, you, you feel faith coming alive as you pray in tongues. There's nothing like it. It is so powerful that we have an upper hand on the enemy when we know how to use tongues. Building up, the word building literally means to build upon, to, to construct, to confirm to edify, to recharge. Like, like the building of a house. When you pray in tongues, your faith is being built up. It's being constructed. It's being repaired. Another word is to be repaired, which means when your faith has a knock, when your faith has been beaten, when your faith has had some challenges, well, you know what to do. I'm going to rebuild this thing. Tongues. Praying tongues. You go into tongues. You pray a long time in tongues. And you watch 
how that faith starts to be rebuilt. And, and I'm going to give you some testimonies later, but you literally come out of that kind of a session of praying in tongues. <sighs> Strong. Your faith is so charged. Actually, if you read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 13, 14, and 12, it talks there about the nine gifts of the Spirit. One of the nine gifts of the Spirit is faith. And the Bible says the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, He is the giver of the gifts. He, he distributes the gifts. Now don't miss this. So the faith in, in, a, in the nine gifts of the Spirit, to, to some, He gives faith. Now that faith is not this normal faith that we've been talking about. That faith is the faith to come up against impossibilities. It's the faith that you need when, you, when you're confronting something big. It's the faith that you, you need when you confront a terrible, bad news. That you, you need, a, you need a, a, a supernatural faith. The Holy Spirit gives you that faith. And I, I believe that He gives you that faith through the means of praying in tongues. Actually, every gift of the Spirit, I believe, comes as a result of praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues, wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. Amen. It builds up your faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. How many of you would like to be built up on the inside today? Amen. Well, you know what to do. You've had a hard day. You've had some knocks. I'm just going to pray in the Holy Ghost here while I'm driving. We know what to do. This is for your use, beloved. Why has the... Listen to this. And I should have started with this, and, and, uh, but I'm so excited. I'm just going ahead of myself. Listen. Why has the devil attacked tongues from the very beginning in Acts chapter 2? These are crazy. These are drunk. They mock them. Ever since that day, the most targeted doctrine in the Bible has been tongues. All the way through church history, there was always pockets of believers that believed in the baptism with the Holy Spirit. It didn't just go from the day of Pentecost to Azusa in 1906. I've got books in my little library at home that I've got books there that talk about. All the way through, from the book of Acts, from the early church, you will see pockets of churches, pockets of believers that they always spoke with tongues. But get this, they were always outcasts. They were not allowed in the institutionalized church. They were not allowed into the religious system because they were always looked at as the crazy people, the, the, the ones that are not educated, the ones that are that, 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 they're not smart like us, the tongue talkers. So they would gather in caves. They would gather in homes. But listen, in those caves, in those homes, Whereas the temples had no healing, they had healing, hallelujah. Whether it's in the temple, there was no deliverance, there was no power. In those caves, in those homes, they had the power of God released and manifested in their services, hallelujah. All the way through, why has the devil bombarded with attacks against tongues? You know why? Because he knows how powerful it is. No other doctrine has been so scrutinized and so stained and, and so debated. So much debate about tongues. And you hear some silly things from people. Tongues is of the devil. Tongues ceased with, when the last apostle died. Tongues are not for today. The reason is this. Because the devil knows that a tongue-talking Christian, hallelujah, that a tongue-talking believer, that a tongue-talking church has something powerful at their disposal and is a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Come on, church, say amen this morning. Tongues. I believe in the baptism with the Holy Spirit. I believe in tongues. I'm not ashamed of it. No, no, no. I will never say to my church, do not don't keep the tongues for home life. No, no. We can pray in the Holy Ghost here. We can worship in the Holy Ghost. You can break forth in the Spirit. Hallelujah. We're not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation. 
How can it be that Pentecostal churches are, are not promoting this? They're, they're, they're quieting it down. They're saying, that, leave that for your private life. Don't do it here because you might offend someone. And the enemy's going, oh, please take that tool out of your artillery. Take that weapon out. Thank you very much for doing me a favor. Beloved, you can build up your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities. The Spirit helps our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we should, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Oh, there you go. There's the Holy Spirit helping you. The Spirit helps us in our infirmities. You know what the word infirmities means? In our weakness. When we are weak, the Spirit wants to help us. How? Praying with groanings that cannot be uttered. See, when, when, your, when your faith has been contaminated with doubt, when doubt comes into your faith, it makes your faith weak. When, when fear when fear comes into your faith, it makes your faith weak. When worry comes, excessive worry, anxiety, depression, stress, one of the greatest stress medicines is tongues. It is a given. I don't have time on a Sunday morning, it's a short time, but I could, there's reports that have come out, that they, they, they connected a certain group of women and men with their, on their brain onto a machine and they got them to pray and sing in tongues. When they began praying in tongues, there's an area in the brain that is dormant. But when they prayed in tongues, that area releases like a... It releases like a, like a like a, chem like a chemical, natural chemical into the body that influences the whole immune system. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. They did not know. Why, 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 why is that area in the brain? It is directly connected to the immune system. And when you pray in tongues, that area releases something that is beneficial to your physical body. It brings joy. It brings peace. Come on. You start praying in tongues, depression goes. I tell you right now, it goes. The Spirit will help you in your weakness. When you know that you're coming weak, when you know that your faith has been attacked and doubt has crept in and fear is in there and anger is in there and hatred is in there and, and you've read the Word and you're confessing the Word and you're hanging around the right people and you just want to add another dimension to this battle, pray in tongues, hallelujah. And as you pray in tongues, the Spirit helps you in your infirmities with groanings that cannot be out. So he's, there's a help there. There's a help, there's a, there's a comfort, the counsellor of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. First Corinthians chapter 14. Can I get the church to say amen, hallelujah? I don't know about all this tongue stuff. It's going to help you. Smith Wigglesworth I read in his biography he says someone said to me hey Smith Wigglesworth do you take vacations? he says no I don't he says what do you mean? I don't take the vacations that you think I take he says I take a vacation every day I pray in tongues one hour and that is my see we, we go on vacation to what? To relax, to recharge, to rest. But if you can learn this, every day you rest. 
You just there, hallelujah. Put some worship music on, hallelujah. Put the kids aside, take the kids to mum. Get serious about this. You know, if you drive 30, 40 minutes to work, that's the place. That's the place. Put the CD in and just in the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. You recharge your batteries. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 2 to 4. Here's some benefits of praying in tongues. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. For he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. Benefit number one. We speak not unto men, but we speak directly to God. It is a direct prayer. Unhindered. Amen. We are communing with God by the Spirit and it bypasses our head. And now this is where many in the church miss it. Because when you pray in tongues, your head is not sleeping, your head is not in a coma. Your head can hear everything, so your head starts saying, you're crazy. You're dumb. That sounds like the Flintstones. Yabba dabba do. That sounds like a Japanese car. Hallelujah. Toyota. Camry. And he starts telling you, what you're doing now is not worth it. It's, it's, it's crazy. You got to, listen, when you pray in tongues, you're praying directly to God. Now don't tell me that's not going to build up your faith. Hallelujah. Don't tell me that doesn't encourage you. You are talking in that one direct access to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. You're praying directly to God. There is no hindrance. There is no, there is no interference. The devil doesn't even know what you're saying. They, it, tongues is like a form of secret code that the devil does not even know what you're saying. You are, you are, you, the, the word says there, he who pray, speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. Amen? Speaks directly to God. Then it says, For no man understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. Everybody say mysteries. So, benefit number one, when you pray in tongues, you speak directly to God. Amen? Romans 8.27 says he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. I love praying in tongues. I actually, me personally, I pray in tongues more than in Spanish or English. I pray, it's, it, that's, you, you've got to pray, I mean, you cannot do this being ministry and not, you've got to pray in tongues. It's, it, forget it. I will not preach without, you've got, my, my greatest preparation to, for preaching is tongues. You have that. You know why? You know why? Because when I pray in tongues, I'm praying to the perfect will of God. Amen. So the tongues is, is it says there you you pray, He prays for you according to the perfect will of God. So I can be assured that when I'm praying in the Spirit, the Spirit is praying perfectly about things in my life, in my family, in my ministry, and Minor things, things that I cannot pick up that are affecting my faith. See, when I pray in English, in Spanish, I find myself repeating myself too much. I don't like it. Very limited language. Very, our, our, our English, and I speak Spanish, I pray in a lot of Spanish as well, because I try to get some new words in there, hallelujah. Because you just want to wanna talk to God, you just want to really open up to God, and just, you just find English and Spanish doesn't have enough to cut it. Let's go into tongues. And you just walk around. Walk around. Get your head out of the way because your head will tell you you're crazy. That sounds like a machine gun. Let it be a machine gun. Yes, it's a machine gun. Hallelujah. The devil is very scared of that machine gun. Someone said to me once, oh, pastor, you prayed for me today. And all I said was, da, da, da. I said, you got it. Start with the da, da, da. And then that'll go to Rabaka. And then you just, you got to do it every day. When my son started talking, Eric started talking, all he would say was, daddy. Dada, mama, but the more, now he can't keep him quiet. <laughs> well, don't think that after you just got baptized in the Holy Ghost, you've already got a huge vocabulary in the tongues. That comes with practice, that comes. 
as you develop. And there'll be some, like, you will know, everyone that prays in tongues here, you will know that you'll always, you sort of hear the same tongues coming out of you. Because that's, that's the language that God has given to you. But you know what you pray? said, Lord, can I expand that? Go in. And then there's tongues and then there's groanings. Where you don't say anything, it just comes from here. Now that's another dimension. Is this okay for a Sunday morning? Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. It's going to help you. You speak directly to God. You pray the perfect will of God. And get this. You pray mysteries. You just read it there. In the Spirit, He speaks mysteries. So when I pray in tongues, I'm speaking mysteries. You know what mysteries are? Secrets. The word mysteries means secrets. You, in the Spirit, you are, you are untapping or uncovering secrets that are for your benefit. The Spirit is praying through you and what is hidden, He's opening it up in the Spirit. And get, and get this, I'll go a little bit further. We've got to get to the place where we ask God to interpret our tongues. Because then you get the benefit of what you prayed. When I heard once, I heard when uh, Kenneth Hagen was teaching about this, and he said this, I thought, my, okay, that's another level there. He was talking about how he, he developed the tongues, praying in tongues, and he says, I said, he said one day, hang on a minute, when I pray in tongues, I'm praying mysteries, I'd like to know some secrets. Can you imagine that in your business? In your family. Yeah. See, because sometimes you're driving and don't you think that just ideas come to your head and you're so smart. No, that was what you prayed in tongues. Yeah. That's happened to me many times. He says, I was praying. I said, you know what? I'm going to get a tape recorder. I'm going to put it on my, on, my, on, my, on my office table and I'm going to press play while I'm praying in tongues. And then... I'm sorry, not play, I'm going to press record when I'm praying in tongues. Then when I'm finished praying in tongues, I'm going to get a notepad out and I'm going to press play, listen to the tongues and ask the Holy Spirit to interpret the tongues. Well, that's Bible. It says here you can interpret. And then I'm going to have the pen ready and start writing. And yeah, huge ministry. When you pray in tongues, you're praying mysteries. Believe that. Believe that you receive. So you say... This is how I do it. I say, for example, I'll say, Holy Spirit, can you pray through me now concerning the church? And I'll start praying. Just by faith. And I'm believing that when I'm praying for the church, mysteries are coming out. And then later on, while I'm driving, or I'm in my office, or I'm praying in Spanish or English, I, I get like an idea. Or I get like a, a thought. And it's not me. And I go, okay, the Lord's showing me something here. That's happened all along in this ministry. Mysteries. Imagine you have a business. Beloved brother somewhere, your business. Hallelujah. And you say in the morning, Holy Spirit, pray through me about my business. Just pray through me. I just, give me wisdom. And you start praying the Spirit. And then all of a sudden, that day you get a phone call and business coming in and you get an idea. I'm going to do this. That's the Holy Spirit interpreting the, the secret that was unfolded as he prayed for you in tongues. And don't tell me that doesn't build up your faith. That builds up your faith. Yeah. Number three. What does it say in verse three? He that prophesies speaks unto men to edification. Verse four. He that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. But he that prophesies edifies the church. Everybody say edifies. So three benefits. We speak to God. Can you imagine being able to speak to uh, Scott Morrison? Just one-on-one. -on -one. Can you imagine being able to speak to Donald Trump? One-on-one. -on -one, the most powerful man in the world. One-on-one. -on -one, just one-on-one. -on -one. Well, you're at that table now. You're at that level. Can you imagine the, 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 the conversation? Well, we're not speaking to any man. We're speaking to God. Yeah. In the Spirit. See, when I, speak, when I, when I pray in English or Spanish... I find my prayers being I want, I need, bless me, touch me, heal me, guide me, open doors for me. Very limited prayer. When I pray in tongues, 
What is the Holy Spirit praying? Wow. I believe you to God. Then, what did we say? We open up mysteries. Then, it says here, we edify ourselves. The word edify is the same word as he that prays in an unknown tongue builds up his most holy faith. The word edify means to uplift, to be a house builder, to construct, to refresh. You want to be refreshed? Pray in tongues. But the, 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 the really important one is to be recharged. So like a battery is recharged. So I don't know if this, is, if this microphone has a battery, but eventually the battery dies and the microphone does not work. It loses its power. It loses its potential. It loses the reason why it exists. So the battery needs to be connected to the electric socket so that it can generate power into that battery. Then you put the hallelujah. Then you put the battery. <laughs> did you get that? Then you put the battery back into the microphone, and now the microphone works. Yeah. Mark, some of you need to put your battery into the electric socket of the Holy Ghost and connect with God in tongues, and then God puts you back the faith, and you work and you function as a believer on this earth. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel flat. I feel like I'm just not where I should be. I just feel like I've lost the passion. Tongues, get into tongues. Start praying in tongues. One hour a day. Start with 10 minutes. Do you remember Samuel, when we went to that conference in Adelaide, the brother that taught about tongues, what, he wrote a book. 10 minutes of tongues every day. He says, uh, Barry Chan, you know Barry Chan. 10 minutes of tongues every day. Because you know what he said? He says, Though we think we pray in tongues for long periods of time, we really don't. And remember what he did? He got us all to stand up and he said, all right, start now. For the next 10 minutes, everyone in tongues. After three minutes, you could hear it dying out. So we think we pray in tongues a long time. But if you can start with 10 minutes, just 10 minutes, 10 minutes of tongues. He said, and it's true, that it will add a dimension to your faith life that you will never know. It will lead you to another realm, another atmosphere. Another, it, it connects you to the glory of God. It makes you sensitive to spiritual things. It makes you sensitive to the spirit. You pick up things. You discern things. You walk into that. You, uh, you, you can, that, that is powerful. Yeah. You can look through people. Pick it up in here. Aha. The Holy Spirit. Tongues. Did you like that? Amen. I'm not being who God's called me to be. Charge that battery. Amen. All right. Okay, the last thing here that I want to share with you is this. Let's go to John chapter 11. Let's lubricate this component. Let's start using it. Amen. John chapter 11, verse 33 to verse 35. John chapter 11, verse 33. Lazarus has been in the tomb for four days. Jesus comes on the scene. He loved the Lazarus. Lazarus was his friend. He loved him. Jesus comes on the scene and he sees Lazarus' two daughters, two sisters, sorry. They're crying. They're weeping. Jesus loves this family. It affects him. Look at verse 33. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and he was troubled. Stop there. He groaned in the spirit. Jesus there was praying in the Holy Ghost. That's the same word groan as Romans 8.26. He intercedes for us. He helps us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Jesus confronted with Lazarus in the tomb for four days, his two sisters crying, he, what do I do? Even Jesus, he was fully God, but he was fully man. Everything he did, he did it by faith under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So when he confronts this situation, he's fully man. What do I do? He groaned in his spirit. The Holy Spirit prayed through him to, build, to make him strong in his faith and to give him discernment of what to do. I want you to see this. Jesus is picking up the instructions of what to do here. What do I do? Lazarus is in the tomb, four days. His two sisters are crying. What do I do here? There's an expectation, but what do I do in the natural? He, he groaned in the spirit. 
Oh, hallelujah. My, you will confront situation, switch into tongues immediately, and you watch how you, your faith is strong, and then you know what to do. He groaned in the spirit, and he was troubled. He was troubled. Of course he was troubled. What do I do here? But he groaned. He prayed in the Holy Ghost. He prayed in the spirit. He groaned in the spirit. Then he said this, and, and he said, where have you laid him? See the questions? See how he's, he's taking it slow? You don't just walk into a house and someone's sick and you're not going to lay hands on them straight away. You wait. Pray in the Spirit first. Take it easy. Discern what's going on. You don't walk into an atmosphere and this need. You just wait. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Let, okay. Where have you laid him? Okay. See, you don't straight. What, okay, come here. And you ask questions. Faith makes you strong. This has happened to, to, to us so many times. I remember once, I'm going to share this testimony, when my, my father-in-law called us one morning with my wife and, my, and, my, and myself, and he said, you need to come over immediately because your mother is... I don't know what's going on. She doesn't know where she is. She does, she, she's hallucinating. And I could hear it in his voice. And so we went there immediately. When we got there, not thinking anything big, when we got there, Eric and myself get out of the car and we start walking and my, and my sister is outside the house and she's, she looks lost and she looks, and the brother's behind. I could see the brother was very concerned. And Eric and myself, we walk up to her, and she does this. She starts going, she starts looking, and she, and she looks, she goes, what's going on? Where am I? Who are you? She was completely out of this, out. What's going on? What is it? What's, who am I? Who are you? What, what is this? And that, that, that hit you. And her face was, you know, it wasn't her. It wasn't her. She, it was something real an attack on, on, on her body. So when we saw that, well, that's enough to shock, to shock you and to knock you, especially Erica. But you know what? It's just, it was amazing. It was amazing. Erica, we come up to her. She comes to us. She's going like, she's walking backwards. And we grab, I grab on one side. Erica grabs on the other. And it, without even saying, immediately we both break out into tongues. Straight away. Not loud. We grab it. We just, go, we just start going, Rama, come. because right there, I needed my face to be strong. Because what I could, what I saw in her was like, whoa, what's going on here? I needed my faith strong. Eric and we both grabbed it and tongues, 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 tongues. And we we walk, we walk, we walk, we walk, we walk, and we put it in the car and we took authority over the situation straight away. Because that can cripple you, that can affect you. What a blessing it is to go into tongues, isn't it? The first thing to say, what's going on, Mama? What's going on, Mom? That's the first initial reaction, isn't it? You're going to die. We start speaking silly things. Isn't it better, beloved, just to go, build up my faith here, Lord, because I'm, I'm about to lose it here. Lord, build up my faith. Hallelujah. And you take authority. See, you build up your most holy faith when you pray in tongues. I remember when my son, when we were driving to Sydney, my son had the, the episode that he had in the car where he broke out into a seizure. Terrible, terrible seizure. Where, where I actually, to be honest with you, I actually thought he was going, like the way he was, the way he was you know, uh, convulsive. Man, when I saw this, we were there in the middle of nowhere. Terrible. What do you do there? Thank God we can go to tongues. Because you. you know what? <laughs> I'm holding my son there. And I, th I think his life's going out of him. In that moment, I'm thinking, oh, what's going on? Everyone's screaming. And I know straight away, I said, I said, I said no, nah. stop, stop. And I said, see you later. There we go, stay there with him. And I went into the bush. 
I left Eric there, poor Eric. I said, I've got to go and get this thing settled in tongues right now. And I went away and Sammy was out there trying to get... Amazing what he did. He got the ambulance there. He did some longitude with altitude. I don't even know what he did. Hallelujah. And he, he pinpointed the, the ambulance to where we were. But while he was doing it, I was in there. And you know what I was doing? Praying in tongues. Praying in tongues. Praying in tongues. Praying in tongues until my faith was strong enough. And come back into that situation and say, everything's going to be all right. Hallelujah. It's all going to be good. You can't fake that. You can fake it to a certain extent. But if you can say it by the Holy Ghost, everything's going to be all right. Hallelujah. Thank God that we can go into tongues. The worst thing to do there is to weep and cry and it's over and done. That's the worst thing we can do. But that's what we want to do. But we cannot do that because we establish atmospheres. I remember when some... Every, Kalev, again, it's Kalev, Kalev again. He fell over and he cracked his tooth and his whole tooth came out. The whole tooth. Here. His adult tooth came falling out. And, and when you see that, like the first thing is to go, is to scream and to, ah, he's lost his front tooth. He's going to be, he's going to walk around as a teenager with no tooth, you know. But straight away I said, no, we've got to control this situation. Tongues. Amen. So you just go away. Praying tongues, praying tongues. Get that, build up your faith. And then I remember in the car, I was building up his faith. I said, Kalev, everything's going to be all right. God is with us. That tooth is going back in. I was building him up with faith. And he was like, hey, this is good. Sometimes we open doors by the way we talk, by the way we act. Oh, God's not blessing. Oh, what's going on with my faith? What's going on with the church? What's going on with the ministry? What's... Hey, that doesn't help no one. Doesn't it help, doesn't help you. Get into tongues. Amen. Pray in tongues. Yes. So Jesus, grind in the spirit. He said, okay, okay, where is he? First question, where is he? He's, he's getting this direction from God. Amen. They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. The shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. That word wept is not what you think that he cried out of mourning. He was crying in praying in the Holy Ghost. Have you ever prayed in the spirit where you're weeping? Jesus was weeping. He was praying. And they said, the Jews, behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man which opened his eyes, the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Look at verse 38. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, came to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. What did he do in verse 38? He groaned again, and I love this. I love this. And he went to the cave. He went to the place where there was dead things. He went to the place where, where there needed to be a resurrection. He went to the place. He didn't run away from the situation. He went to the situation, and he dealt with it. By the power of the Spirit, he caused life to come back. The Bible says he called Lazarus. Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came out of the tomb. Four days he was, he would, he was stink, stinking, the stench of his body. But Jesus called him out. He did all that by the power of the Holy Spirit. So you see these things? He gets his faith strong. He builds up his faith. Then he's listening. What do I do here? Where is he? Just good questions. Where is he? Take me to the cave. Lord, what do I do now? Call his name out. Lazarus, come forth. Be sensitive. The Holy Spirit's going to tell you what to do. The Holy Spirit's going to show you what to do. Build up your faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. I want to encourage you this morning, church. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Spirit. Every day. Every day. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 1 hour if you can. Every day. And you watch, you, your Christian life will go to another level. Your, your perception of spiritual things will go to another level. You'll be able to discern spirits, atmospheres. You'll, be, you'll know what to do. You know, if someone gives you the sack this week, hey, relax. Go outside, pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit. And God will tell you, you're, this, you're getting the sack because I'm giving you a promotion somewhere else. Amen. God is good. God is good. Let's all stand up this morning.